We're out here in the swamps. Guess what's out here? Crawfish. Tonight we caught crawfish. I'm going to tell you the Florida regulations on crawfish. I'm going to tell you the best method of catching them, and I'm going to tell you where to catch them. If you're looking to catch crawfish, I'm your guy. Grab your traps, guys. We're going crawfishing. You're listening to Rodney Rogers Outdoors Radio, where we turn it upside down and look at the outside from the inside out. It's safe, it's legal, and we're having a blast. So put your shoes on, my friend, because we're going outdoors. Welcome to Rodney Rogers Outdoors. I am Rodney Rogers. That dancing fool right there is my partner, Coach Ethan Crime. <laughs> I'm Mike, ready to be educated and entertained. That's what I'm talking. Mike, the man, Coy himself. How are you, brother? It's good to be here. Amen, man. Our one hour, one hour vacation during the week. It is. The weather's phenomenal, dude. The wet. Can you see the the visor yes, sunburn I've got there? That visor tattoo. Yeah. That's when you lose your favorite hat. And then you go, all I have is a visor. And you know this is going to happen. You know. What are you going to do? But you, you got to do it when you're fishing. What are you going to do? I mean, if you're not in Florida, you need to get here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pack you it up. Close it down. Just say we're gone. This week is. Just give it up. Yeah. This is Sell everything you own. Perfect. You can move down here for the simple cost of a snow plow. That's what I'm just saying. Sell your snow plow to your buddy. This That's is going to need it. Very, I've never heard that perspective yeah. before. That is You're just a snow plow away. Interesting. <laughs> you get to hang out with us tonight. You can reach us in a couple different ways. Uh, like I said, this is our one-hour vacation. You can reach us at 262-345-7763. That'll ring through the system, and it'll also ring Mike Coy. He'll answer your call. We'll talk to you live. You can hashtag us on Twitter if you're a Twitter person. A lot of people are still tweeting. It's a big deal, man. Hashtag R-R-O-R, right to the Twitter feed. Mike will read your question or your statement on air. You may call me out on something if I'm wrong. Feel free to, feel free, feel free to do it if you want to do it. <laughs> I dare you do it. I bit my tongue today, man. And, man, did you I. keep I, getting it in the same spot. Yes, I bit it like it was a T-bone steak, and it wouldn't tear off the bone. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> and you can also text this if you want to text us at 262-345-7763. We'll take your text as well. So either way, there's no excuse. You can reach us. You can reach us tonight. You've, you've provided it all right there. That's it. That's how you can uh, reach the us. The table is set. Not to mention, it's right here at the, yeah, somewhere. The table the, is Somewhere it's here. pretty close. Don't don't knock it over. <laughs> I know. I'm like, <laughs> show shut down. And, and, and now it's three five three six. <laughs> we jumbled up the numbers. Uh, um, not to talk technical because I hate it when people talk. Yeah. But l let me throw a disclaimer out there. Let's do it. I don't think we're going to have problems tonight. Right. But if we do, we'll see you next week. Because <laughs> it will shut down. We've had some major changes in with the with the. Um, the Bright House cable, or as I like to call them, Bright House stupid. Right, right. I agree. Um, Spectra, so, so, yeah, spoolies. whatever is going on there. Yeah. So, um, so we're it's we're supposed to be our... screaming fast, but I have my doubts. I hope it's screaming reliable. Is all I care about. <laughs> just, just make us. Make so us we're look on a, good. <laughs> we're test pilots once again tonight. So I apologize. I think we're going to be fine, but I'm just saying, if we do, I apologize yeah. up front. Hold on. I, guess I might have just brought something up. Didn't need to bring up, but. I wanted to say that in case. No, you did, because last week we had a update in the system, and what's funny is the voice was, you know, uh, it was all messed up. Yeah. And that was the update they put out a bug yeah. fix. That and night. That was the bug. That, that night. night. Yeah, that night. And that was the bug fix. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, when you're running off apps, they update all the time, yeah. and sometimes they don't always jive in the, in the equipment that we use. So you know what? I'll take it though. Yeah. Because uh, over the what? fact of the matter is, we're way. You look marvelous. We're way you ahead of the marvelous. game. <laughs> and we'll this is it. this is pretty special, and I'm honored to be here with you on the air 
What? What? <laughs> Did you see that? No, I, I almost fell asleep on you. I'm, so, you know no, what? Not you, but I'm just saying. Just I, to, to wrap up our little chit chat, because we'll, we got a good show tonight. Yes, we do. We got a definitely got I a text. Day. Speaking of technology, you ever send a text and only like a couple days later, when it, later and you find out it failed to deliver? Yes. I sent you a text on, I don't even know, over the weekend. Right. About last night. You may have seen it now, but my father's birthday was yesterday. Oh, no, I didn't see it. And um, Because I thought that was weird that Rodney didn't call. Yeah. Not, not to put you on, on the no, spot. No, no, yeah, like, yeah. That's just, that's cool. I mean, he's busy and, you know, probably with 104 and the, nope. who knows, every the, night's different. But, and then I saw today that it um, failed to deliver. You never even oh, saw it. Oh, okay. But. We yes, it was his birthday, and we did a virtual online birthday party on Facebook Live. No way! Yeah, how did I miss that? Like I said, I didn't send you the text, and I I got on his his Facebook page and sent from my um, Facebook. <clears throat> I sent right. everybody messages. Right, right. The copy and paste, basically saying, "Hey, eight o'clock." Dad doesn't. He didn't know it. Oh, we nice. went over to do his little his Bible study thing yes, that, he, yes. that he does online, and so he thought we were doing because I had the camera set up, the lights, and he was just. Same thing we do all the time, but it's not right. live. It's recorded. And then my sister calls. We're like two minutes into my sister calls. says, hey, is, uh, Dad, I just want to say happy birthday, and we're enjoying you on Facebook. Of course, we planned this out, you know. Right, right. So it was on the air. That he the whole th- time. He's like, I'm incredibly confused right now. <laughs> <laughs> because it's hard enough to wrap your head around yes. this. The, yeah. yeah. What's really going Then as he started to realize that, you know, he had 15 and 20 people and they were calling and watching live, and they were texting on the that thing. Is awesome. And we had face, people were FaceTime. It was pretty bizarre. Yeah, yeah, but even, yeah. Even at one point, I'm not sure what's ringing or who's talking to who, and <laughs> but it was it was a good old time, but we had a really good participation. Well, I hate and, that I missed that, man. I really do. Happy birthday, Bob, if, yeah, you, so if it, you... It was a good time, but we were, yeah. on, we were on for an hour on Facebook Live, just letting people call, and I had a little graphic up with the birthday, and... I know that has nothing to do with out the outdoors, no, but um, yeah, he's man. But it, it was man. it was a good time, and yeah. um, I, I just enjoyed being being with them for well, the hour. We, we had cake, and I hate that I didn't and, get it. That's so. awesome. But anyway, sorry, to put you on the spot. No, no, no. Speaking no, no. of technology, yeah, it can it can blunder the moment as quick as it could make one golden. The last update I heard from you, Rodney, was two twenty away. What is that? Two hundred and forty five. Two forty five. Yeah, on, I had on your Bass 365 yep. Bass Challenge. Yeah, well, starting the weekend, I had 3:30. Okay. Five. Yes, I was 30 fish away. No, hold on. Yeah, yes, 3:35. I had 30 fish to get over the weekend. Okay. Uh, so no, hold on. I had 35 fish. Yes, I had 35 fish to get over the weekend. Saturday, I caught 15. Sunday, I had to catch 20 bass. Okay. To end the 365 challenge. Okay. And man, did I knock it out. I literally. You didn't make 365. I made 365. I pulled it out of the hat. Are you kidding me? I, you, you didn't see the video? I, Rodney, I've been, we'll talk. Oh, I've been. That's of, right. You have I need been. something. Oh, applause. There we go. Yeah, you have oh, been bigger, busy. Bigger. You're Everybody. Yeah, thank you. That's all we need. 365. That's great. You deserve every bit of that. <laughs> Take it in, Rodney. Every bit of that you deserve. If you see the video, I didn't even think I would have told you tonight and we would have played the – It's. it was only literally – I mean, I fished 12 hours to pull in that, that. So I had 19, and we went live on the last I didn't, fish. This is awesome news. And uh, so I was like, okay, so you know, I throw out there, and I'm like reeling, and then all of a sudden I miss a fish. I miss it. I put it back. It misses it again. And I'm like, oh my god! I didn't hook it. That was that was number, and it was. I fished the last hour and a half without even a bite, and I didn't think I was two fish away. So on our way out, I'm headed out there. So you know, I've not fished this spot right here. This spot I have not fished. Let me fish this spot. So <clears throat> I get over there. I throw the first cast. The second cast, I pull a fish in the boat. This is it. So this is this is the one. So Lisa goes, we need to go live on this last one so you can catch it live. And I didn't even think about it. And I'm like, duh, yeah. So poof, we fire up the camera live. Are you kidding me? No. So I'm live, 
and I'm getting, you know, I'm taking this fish off and getting my picture. We're getting it all set up, swinging back around. And I come back around and I'm back in the spot and I'm, I'm saying, look, you know, this is, this is it. This is the, the, the whammy, the grand finale, the, the hoopla. This is the, the, the coupe de gras. So I flip out there and I make a few casts and I'm telling everybody what I'm doing. I'm like, you know, I'm running a frog, but I'm not buzzing it across the top. A zoom frog. I'm just, I got it under the water and then all of a sudden he hits. Pow! I set the hook. I miss it. I drop it back. He hits it again. I set the hook again. He misses it again. I didn't get the hook. It didn't hook him. So I'm like, okay, okay. So I'm, I'm readjusting my frog back on. I, I said, he didn't hook. And this is all live on Facebook. This is all live. Oh, my god. So I flip it back out there. He plops. I'm reeling in. I'm talking. And all of a sudden, wham. No way. He pile drives it. I flip him up in the boat, man. And it was, it was actually an awesome feeling. It was definitely an awesome feeling. I wanted to pull it off, and I did. And I actually oh. caught one after that just to – just to seal the deal. You know what I mean? I want in case I was one off or something like I actually caught two after that, just in case I was a few you know Rodney, that is phenomenal so, news. And I pop now, see now it's on me. Now it's now I, I'm back at you. you. I don't mean to put you on the spot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. See, so, I mean this really is our catch up time. Th- it <laughs> is. It is. We so, don't do a whole lot of talking during the weekends. Especially unless, during the busy yeah. seasons of work. Yeah, because you're pulling. busy and, 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 and I'm trying to, you know <sighs> Yeah, uh, I wasn't I was I drove a lot this weekend, so I did. wasn't on Facebook. Right, I wasn't right. online a lot. Yeah, yeah, you did so, drive a lot. But that's phenomenal, dude. And slept a lot. But yeah, it was uh we nailed it out of the park. And I did the math and here's the deal. It took seventy eight days to complete the challenge. But as I'm going through my pictures, of course, it's telling me what day I caught them on. It only took me 40 days to catch 365 bass, which averaged nine bass a day, 9.63 bass a day. And I don't know if you've ever seen 0.63 of a bass, but they're ugly. They're missing it. Some are missing heads and some are missing <laughs> tails. 6.3 bass, 0.63. But it was, it, I averaged in that 40 days nine bass a day. That's crazy. Yeah. So... And you know the I can't the, believe you did. It's the twenty first oh, of March, just for record. And it's sake. over. And that, that was what day? What day was that? That was so, the yes, or uh, Sunday. 17, 18, 19. Yeah, the nineteenth. So nineteenth yeah. of March. You so re- you sealed the deal. I sealed the deal. So. Did you kiss that fish? Did you have I, any? I, he became a star. I took you, a lot of pictures with that him? fish. Did you, <laughs> <laughs> did you name him? Now, I, he earned the right of being let go. Yes, for he sure. did. You know, he definitely did. Um, you know what? He is. Today he's going to tell the story that story for the rest of his oh, fishy that life. That bass going to say, "I was his three hundred. <laughs> he is. I was caught. Took he's picture. A I'm a bass. movie star. That is a bragging bass. So yeah, it was it was That's awesome, great, man. It dude. really was. I uh, I completed the challenge. I mean, wow. I feel horrible. I didn't know because we definitely would have had that. Cued for the oh, night. I didn't even think and about it, honestly. That'll, I'm putting on the front page of the Rodney Rogers Outdoors website. Yeah. Oh, that's definitely. definitely. We'll pull that loose and, and, and yank it out there. It was awesome, man. It really was. It's it's literally the most fish I've ever caught in one year. I mean, it's it's hundred. I mean, 100% the most I've ever caught. I've never done that. I fished so hard over this last, two, you know, th- two and a half months that, I mean, it, man, it was exhausting. I mean, I was about to give up on those last two fish. Well, come like, December, will you be angling again? <laughs> angling, get it? Yeah, angling. A- angling I got you. for uh, another approach to something similar, a challenge? Well, yes. Actually, i And I'm, how will you tweak it? I'm already into a different, you know, in, in a bass, another bass challenge. I'm already two fish into this. I want to catch all of Florida, five Florida species. You should catch every bass in Florida. <laughs> I'm going to catch... <laughs> Every, all 343 million fish so um, five species five, all species. five species it's it's in the peacock bass is not one of them okay but i'm going to add that one in there just because um so i already have a peacock for the year so if we go um i'm going to catch a nice one i've got a small one so it's the the kusa it's the shoal it's the swanee it's the spotted it's the largemouth and will go peacock the peacock's the coupe de gras it's okay. like an extra so those five um mostly uh the swanee is of course in the swanee swanee river and then the others are north florida and the these bass you know rarely over 12 inches so these aren't giant bass and same way with the spotted bass so i've got the spotted 
a peacock and a largemouth as as we speak right now. So if you catch all those in a year, you send that to the FWC, you'll get a certificate. So um, it's it's basically a five bass um, certificate of some sort uh, how, recognition. How far will you need to travel to pull an off Panama of City? So I'll you'll be, need to go all the way up to. to I'll need to go okay. all the way up to North Florida. So um, I'll spend the weekend up there. I'll put the John okay. boat in. And there's a couple rivers up there. One's Coosa River, and yeah. you literally, okay. you know, you, you're up that river. And then the Shoal Bass is over near Jacksonville. And then Swanee is on Swanee River. So I'm pretty confident I can pull that off. It's going to be a couple weekends now away. Me, can you – is the Swanee River the only place you can catch a Swanee? Is the Shoal River the only place you can – really? That's, it's, that's it. That's strict. Okay. Yeah. That's it. <clears throat> so I'll do my research. I've already done my research on where – um, I just got to get in and do it, you know, and, it's, and I like to dedicate a couple of days to it because, you know, bass can be those finicky things where you just may not catch one yeah. in a day. You know, you, I got to find a location. I got to find out where there's bass and I got to be able to hit that bass in amongst all the large mouth that that's going to be there. So I'd like to complete that this year as well. And on top of that, I am going to be fishing, you know, for something over 10 pounds. That's just, I always fish for something over 10 pounds. It's not a challenge. I just like to get a real giant this year be interesting to hear and our you know hector's trying to pull a 10 pounder in okay. for the year on his challenge and nick he's just trying to fish he just wants to fish so um you know of course i'm going to keep catching bass over this year it's not like i've stopped bass yeah. fishing you know that's of man of course yeah this this two and a half months has taught that's me like so stopping much breathing yeah exactly exactly <laughs> so uh on my thursday show when we do a thursday show with nick and hector we're going to be talking you know, gear, how did the gear hold out? You know, what lures I mainly used during that time? You know, um, you know what, what lure caught the most bass? Sure. You know, what line held out through the whole thing? You know, did my line hold out? Did my reel hold out? Did my rod hold out? Because I had to do that challenge with one rod. And, man, I'll tell you what, I, I'm used that to it using two or three rods and casting this one. And now, uh, you know, my line sure. cutters was instrumental yeah. in this. You know, which I lost it. So I mean, you know, it's it's been it's been a it's been a rough forty solid forty days. I know when you first started the the three sixty five bass challenge, it sounds like you're going to do a bass a day. That that's kind it, of the average you like to do. Is that possible? I don't think it is. I really don't. I don't think it is because I mean, there's just days when you're not able to fish. I mean, it really is. You're just you're like, I just can't get out there today. So. I mean, it, I think if someone dedicated to it, you know, you know how it is. Sure. You, you dedicate to it, then yeah, I, I think it's possible. But for me, yeah, I don't. I really don't. I mean, you know, you got those days where you just don't want to be out. The, the weather, the heat, the you know, the job. I mean, the jo yeah, the I mean, job. That that would be a huge. Yeah, a, a huge factor. Challenge. Yeah, you know, your job's in the way. But you know, I think. I mean, there's days when when uh there ain't many that I just went out and didn't catch a fish. Uh, you know, um. Because I mean, I uh, the, the ones that I didn't catch a fish, I only fished for about an hour. So, and we've got such a great response on Facebook and and via emails yeah. and through the website of you know our lures and I mean I mean some of my biggest bass came off the grubs. I mean, oh really? Yeah. Sa Saturday I was fishing and my two biggest that day came off the grubs. I caught one five pounds and four and a half pounds. So, I mean, well, speaking of grubs, they're still available. Yes, <laughs> they're still people are still buying them up. Yeah, and I'm about to make a couple of new colors. We're about to order a couple of new colors. Really? Yeah, there's some colors I, I wanna I wanna custom. I'm I'm, okay. I'm with working with Mans to make some custom okay. colors. So they're 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 getting back with me to see if they can do it. And if they can, I, I got a feeling it's going to be phenomenal, hmm. absolutely phenomenal bait. So um, we're gonna give it a shot. It's gonna okay. be like a bass color with a, like a white and a and a green flaky color and then a clear with a golden shiner color okay so we're gonna try that and see what happens i'm hoping my fingers are crossed that's exciting news. i know they can't get a lot of glitter and down to the little legs yeah. so um that's nick you know five years of doing this yeah. show he's still, you should tell him you have a show he still hasn't figured out you watch should. this i'm gonna text him you should, you should have just put him on put him on speakerphone <laughs> you know okay let's do that cancel Let's do that. Let's hey, buddy. Hey, brother. How you doing? Pretty good. How you doing? Man, I'm well. What can I do oh, for you? Hey, I just want to 
much you know i gotta catch more fish and i'm done <laughs> okay so you caught a lot of fish oh yeah you know you could have uh, called in the show and said that you didn't have to really you know we're doing a show right now you know same show we've been doing about three you're years pre- you're, pre- you're prepping for a show right now what's that no no i'm not it's uh 8 20 my show starts at eight. Oh, i'm sorry about that brother that's okay hey hey nick you should watch it sometime <laughs> yeah hey. <laughs> well you should watch it afterwards because we're talking about you so all right man good luck brother right, bro. see <laughs> how can you not well we know he don't watch the show <laughs> he's fishing you know he's only got 30 more fish to go to complete the challenge it's like that's your that's your excuse that actually works like when your mother signs you're 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 late for work or you're yeah, at school i was fishing I was, oh okay then Oh, you're I, good. I got this. Yeah, <laughs> I was your just... get out of jail free card. <laughs> so, so that was it. We completed the 365. Man, congratulations! Ooh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's phenomenal. Do you feel like doing some well, um, some mail, it. Rodney? I dare you. Okay, congratulations. By the way, <laughs> thank you. Letters, we get letters. We get stuff. Whoa, yes. Wait a minute, Mr. Postman. Send me an email with all the details. Another freaking email. Another freaking email song. Mail time. 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 Rodney, 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 uh, Wayne T. DeKalb, Illinois, says, what's the best deer rifle for the money, new or used? You know what's funny? I was at Whole Foods. Whole Foods the other night, buying a steak to celebrate the 365. The guy behind the meat counter asked me that same question. Was his name Wayne T.? I don't know. He never said his name. So the cowbell in my name. I, I was really? like, so I thought that was odd. You know, I thought everybody at Whole Foods was liberal, very liberal. So <laughs> I thought you were going to say there was, they sold one there that you could no. <laughs> recommend. I'm sorry. Whole Foods. Is, <laughs> maybe you're not. I just thought you were. Um, so uh, what's the best deer rifle for the money? And I, and it's just like I told him, it's a, it's a Remington 700 um, BDL is what it's called. I mean, there, there's, there's a couple different rifles. Um, it is very inexpensive when it comes to 30 out sixes and the caliber I would buy is a 30 out six. You can kill deer just about anywhere in the United States. I mean, you, you can kill deer with it anywhere in the United States. Very inexpensive. In what price range? We're talking 340, 380. Okay. Uh, where my Remington, uh, 300 Win mag bolt action was about 780. Wow, significant. Yeah. So it's about half the cost. And, uh, and I got one, man. And I tell you, I've killed, I haven't killed a deer with my Browning yet, but I've killed many with the, with the, with the 700. Wow. Uh, so yeah, man, that's that to me, that's, that's one of the best rifles ever built. Would you recommend, um, places like eBay and used for gear like that? Or no? Uh, eBay wouldn't sell guns at all. They don't even sell, oh, they don't, yeah, they don't okay. sell guns at all, but I, I, I would Craig's definitely list. recommend. A used gun, yeah. I oh, wouldn't. Okay. I wouldn't hesitate. If you know what you're looking for, or yeah. something. I... And I'll tell you what I'll do for you, Wayne. Is on on our on our Facebook page, maybe on our website. I'll post. And this is a great information to know. I'll post the link to the F- federal Department of Law Enforcement where you can put in the serial numbers to a gun and you can see if it's stolen. Oh, really? Uh, yep. So you punch that in, and it'll say it's stolen. You know, and then you bail out of that deal. You know what I mean? What if you have a gun? And you find out that it was. Um, man, that's... Can you get in trouble for that? You can get in trouble if you're caught with that gun. Let's say you bought a gun. The first thing you need to do is go straight to the police department and say, listen, I bought this gun off, you know, sure. so-and-so. Um, I punched in the numbers. It's stolen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what do I do? I mean, you're basically... Well, you know, you're going to get the hem haul. They're going to know where you got it, who who sure. you got it from, and blah, blah, blah. But if you're legit, it doesn't matter. Let them yeah, know. Yeah, absolutely. You yeah. know, just let them know because you get caught with that gun, man. That carries a five-year sentence, mm-hmm. and there's not many people that get out of it. Wow. Yeah, you don't want to be tied to any kind of shenanigans no, like that. No, absolutely not. So always get a bill of sale with your gun and always check to see if it's stolen. Okay. You know? There's a couple ways you can do it. You can actually call an officer to where the purchase is going down, and they can run the numbers right there. That's how I do it. 
That's smart. That's 100% how I would do it. If I buy a used gun, I always go, hey, is it stolen? No, sir. Well, then, great. Um, you don't mind if I call a law enforcement officer out there with us to make the purchase? No, not at all. I've never had a problem with it. Good. Uh, they've always, you know, said been very welcoming. And poof, the gun's never been stolen. I bought many like that. Okay. So if they're hesitant, no, I have no, course, yeah, yeah, bail out. Bad you don't need sign. them anyway. And yeah. that way, that can be addressed all in the same play, okay. same time. Good idea, so. good idea. Uh, Buckshot 99, I think maybe we've heard from Buckshot before. Buckshot, somewhere. yeah. Um, I have a problem finding the deer after the red is gone and the, all the leaves are dropped. Any suggestions? First of all, before you answer that, yeah, put that in layman's term. What is, what is uh, okay. Buckshot an- asking here? So what he's saying is, I have a problem finding the deer after the rut is gone. The rut is the time of year when the when the male deer is is at his peak performance. Um, he he his mind goes into a trance, and he's just smelling for does in heat. So he's it's that mating time. You know what I mean? Sure. I got the birds out of the way. The bees are up to you. <laughs> You're gonna have to find that one out on your own. You're leave me hanging. Um, so, and then when he says when all the leaves are dropped, any suggestions? Leaves are basically, once the leaves drop, it gets crunchy, mm. so he's probably up north. Our leaves don't drop till well wow. after deer season. Good detective work there. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, which means he's probably up north somewhere, and they're crunchy. It's just hard to find. Um, at that point, um, what works for me, it always has, especially up north, is just soft male deer calls. Um, you know, just, just a burp. Oh, I do those all the time. Yeah, <laughs> you do those. Yeah, See, I'm very familiar with and those. And just the soft, because the males will split up during the rut, and then they'll kind of pull back together after the rut. So you'll see them start buddying up again, you know. Because you know how it is. When the women get around, the guys kind of go on their own. Bucks are no different. Big deer are no different. So you can kind of call them in. That's how, I've got a few on my wall from, a, from the deer call that hangs behind me. Just the slow, my Uncle Jerry told me, don't overcall. Just the and wait count to 15 or 20 and do that in successions of three huh and it has worked almost every time you know some of the deer i've called in have been too small to shoot some of them been perfect you know the very first deer i ever called in was a four point and i shot him wow you know and i mounted him he's on my wall you know i've always wanted a four point i know i know what you're thinking (laughs) rodney but it was great deer meat and what i'm thinking four is better than three four (laughs) Uh, we don't have one of those, but yes, that, I mean, that's, that's, they are tough. They, you know, during the late season, that means it's getting later in the season. They're hard to find. You know, these, these things are, you know, they're tired, they're worn out. The big bucks are just, you know, very reclusive. So okay. good luck with that, man. Uh, thanks, Buckshot. You're a loyal man. Riverwise, 240. I'm thinking about buying a bass boat. What are the three most important considerations? <laughs> Stick to a bass boat, number one. Don't get the fishing ski. If mama says, baby, get a fishing ski so we all can ride on the boat. <laughs> do not. I'm telling you. Do not. Listen to her, man. Focus. Focus. Bass boats. Do what you say you're going to do, man. And if it's a woman, do what you say you're going to do. Don't let your husband talk you into it. Get a bass boat. That in-between boat crap never works. Everyone that has ever bought the fishing ski has hated it this you can't a, fish off of it. it's not designed to this fish has off. to be a universal problem it is it's 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 so uh one is water draft how, how much does the water draft because in the state of florida you're going to fish a lot of shallow water so you want a, a, a low drafting boat drafting means how how low it sits in the water so you want eight inches or less anything more than that usually they're big heavy gla- fiberglass boats nothing wrong with an 18 foot aluminum bass boat <laughs> You know, Rick Clun, one of the best fishermen out there on the Bass Tour, fishes out of an aluminum boat. So don't be afraid of it. You can get that thing to go up 70 miles an hour. Uh, Number two is um, deck, deck space. You know, uh, how much deck space do you have? Uh, Because you're walking around, you're fishing on a deck, you're moving to both sides. So deck space is important. Now, these are all my preferences in a bass boat, and I know because I've had them. Now, for number three for me, it's engine size. Now, bigger isn't always better. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Bigger also means more weight, more fuel efficiency, and you want to be able to afford to go out on that bass boat every time you're ready to go. A lot of people go bigger, but they stay home because now it's a lot more in fuel. The boat's a little heavier. It's going to make your boat draft more. So you can find that perfect optimal 
you know, the the first problem you're going to have when you go get a bass boat is it's got a 90 horse. I mean, a 150 ain't that much more. <laughs> Stay away. Yeah, from yeah. Uh, you know, it's you know, it's yeah. not always better. So that's my top three things. That that's what I would do. That's really good. And if I could add a fourth one, a place for your videographer to sit or stand. That would be the fourth yeah, spot. That's number four. <laughs> that's the the bonus tip right there. All right. We got another one from John H. from Austin, Texas. Says, how long will caught fish keep in the freezer? And have you got any tips on freezing? I do. I do have tips on freezing. Here's the key. Um, I eat as much fish as I can fresh. I'll eat it for four or five days. They'll get tired of it, and I'll freeze the rest. Vacuum packing is always the best. Uh, fish freezer burns very easy. The old freezers back in the 60s didn't have the automatic defrost, so you didn't get freezer burn. Remember the ice yeah, that built oh, up oh, in yeah. it? Oh, yeah. That's because it didn't have an automatic defrost. What freezer burn is is the defrost and the refreeze. Defrost and the refreeze. And that's I why don't think I knew that, Rodney. I, man, I'm teaching tonight, Mike. I, I am told teaching you. you something. I was ready to be educated and entertained. So if you've got a 1960s freezer, that's your freezer. But most people don't. So vacuum packing, I always recommend. They're, they're cheap. They're 100 bucks. It's going to save you a ton of money. Uh, but it'll keep in a vacuum pack, uh, you know, a year plus, providing the, the vacuum pack doesn't give way. But if it does, eat that fish first. Just because you see ice crystals on it doesn't mean it's freezer burnt. When you thaw it out and you look at your fish and there's hard and it's all nice and soft or color the fish is supposed to be, and all of a sudden you got some hard areas on it, that's freezer burnt. Toss it. It's going to taste like ice. You're going to hate it. Okay. So just toss it out. Does, um, it go, does it go bad or is it just really just is it doesn't it go bad. Taste? It just has a ice yeah, why, flavor. Yeah, why bother? Yeah, point? it's not even – you don't even taste your fish anymore. So eat as much as you can fresh and then um, – man as quick as possible vacuum pack is the way to go now um do you ever just i mean what's the alternative just like ziplocs yeah ziplocs make sure all the air is out and but definitely doesn't last as long no it's, you got about four months okay four months before it goes bad so you know good luck with that all right yeah so there you have it you've got mail letters we get letters we get stuff I just do it. It's my yeah. thing. <laughs> All right, Rodney. Well, not a lot of uh, current news. I went to the FWC okay. website, my go-to place for hey. outdoor news. Um, yeah, and, and not not a lot going. I mean, there's a lot of online seminars and stuff. Is it is it not the time of year for op well, opening and closing? they've got some things coming up. They've got snapper. Um, 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 what do they call when they get everybody together? Pod not podium, but a, a symposium. Okay. <laughs> you pulled it out. You don't even know how you that thing was out. smoking. Your, your head just turned red. So they've got like some snow snapper and redfish symposiums coming up that they're going to be talking about, you know, uh, limits and how to keep them and when to keep them. So sure. they're, they're just wanting every fisherman's opinion. If you see one of those symposiums and you're able to attend, man, trust me, as a fisherman, you want to be involved in these symposiums. Uh, I try to get involved as much as we can. That way, first of all, I'm informed. But second of all, I want to. I want them to hear my opinion. As a fisherman, you're the guy on the front lines. You're the one that tells them, "My gosh, you know, this is what we're seeing. This is what's happening." Yeah. Right now, you got the fishermen out there. You know, you heard um, Brian. Brian talking about. I like know, that when he was talking about that, the interaction with the FDC. Absolutely. And, stuff. and you got Tyler, our captain out there, who, who rarely sees a Kobe. And now, when we used to see them all, and now we're catching 500 red snappers on every single trip that should be reversed right now. Yeah. We need to stop the Kobe for a while in the state of Florida. I mean, it's not going to stop them everywhere else they run, sure. but it's certainly going to put the smack down on them for a couple of years here. Yeah. The problem is, is, in the state of Florida, once we put them on that list, man, it's hard to get them off. It's like they don't want to let them go. It's like they're making money, you know, off of keeping them, and they're not. So, yeah. you know, it's 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 a it's a, it's, a, it's a gray line. We can run them to extinction, or we can control it. Yeah. So. The, the only thing I saw that was um, of interest, maybe, was because I think you talked about this on the radio the other day, is Polk County was looking for um, trappers. Oh, gator trappers. you mean? Oh, Polk County was. I think it was East Polk East Polk County. I think it was I Polk didn't County. know that. Yeah, you should check it out. But it's interesting. I mean, it was just a blurb saying we're yeah. looking for him. You can't have a criminal mm -hmm. record. 
I don't right? know, there's a few things. I should have read it, but yeah. you can't, can't have a criminal record. You can't have any outstanding <clears throat> um, warrant. Uh, yeah. Something with uh, the FWC. Wildlife va- violations. Yes, that's yes. What, exactly what it was. Yeah. So I just thought it was interesting. So did that come in the email? No, I saw it on the on the current news on the FWC page. I'll, I'll, I'm going to take a look at yeah. it. Yeah, a lot of times you have to live in the county, but I think I'm close enough right there in Kissimmee that, uh, especially with East Side, East Side will be Poinciana. Okay. You know that area there. That's the far East Side. So, okay. Interesting. Uh, maybe we get lucky. Yeah. So Well, man, do you have anything else? Because no, I want to talk. Tonight. Okay. So. Tonight, we'll get to tonight's meat and potatoes. How's that sound? I like potatoes. So tonight we're going to talk crawfish, man. Last week, um, we've got a message uh, on Facebook uh, saying, Hey, Rodney, um, you know, have you ever talked about crawfish? And I was like, you know what? As a matter of fact, we haven't. But tonight, we're going to. I'll be honest, there's a little bit of a... A lot of a bit of, of fascination with this. When you said we were going to talk crawfish and you had this question. Yes. I lit up a little bit because, and again, I don't know if it's because they seem obtainable to yes. everyday man like myself. Exactly. Although I've never been down this route, I'm excited to <laughs> to take the journey with you. So so here's, here's a couple things. Basically, I'm just trying to pull up and give a shout out to... Um, who got the, the, the who shot us the question and I'll do that. Um so basically we're talking crawfish. He wanted to know what are the rules? What are the regulations? Where can I catch them? How do I catch them? I I can't find anything to tell me what to do here. Um so I love crawfish. I've caught tons of crawfish in the state of Florida. So I thought, man, I'm your guy. Crawfish are basically what? Crawfish look like little bitty lobsters. Okay. So if you look at a main lobster, you're basically looking at a giant crawfish, and they're also called crawfish. Okay. Crayfish. Here we go. Is yeah, they're mud bugs, crayfish, or crawfish. So some people call different. Them, or yeah, all the same. No, they're all they're one of the same. You, okay. It, okay. The, the name is interchangeable. Depends where you're from, I suppose. Yeah, Louisiana is called a dead del Bradel, called it the mud bugs. And then if you're from Florida, you go, hey, I want one of them crawfish. Now, if you're in, you know, northern United States, they call it a crayfish. So we call it just sheer goodness. It is delicious. They are awesome. And they're easy, easy to catch. So, you know, having said that, let's get into the regulations of crawfish. So, Mike, I'm going to shoot you a a little trivia here. Are these just uh, freshwater these are just fresh water. Okay. Yes. I mean they're they're in the brackish water. Okay. You know, there's a little bit of salt, a little bit of okay. but uh, they're they're mostly in the in the fresh water. Uh if if you had to guess on what the limit of crawfish was, what would you say it was? If you if you know, obviously, you know, you're allowed five black bass, you're allowed uh you know, twelve lobsters, you're allowed so what would you say crawfish wise? I mean, you'd go Well, I would think only because I've seen, when you think crawfish, you think buckets of crawfish. Okay. So I'm thinking they're probably, I would say it's probably in the, your limit is 50 per, Okay. Per, per, I don't know, 50 per season, per day. Right. It seems a lot per day. All right. Okay, 50, 50 is my answer. Let's say 50 is your answer. There is no limit of crawfish in the state of Florida. You can catch 18 tons if you wow. wanted to. You know, uh, if you okay. if you wanted to catch eighteen tons of crawfish, man, set you nine hundred traps and and get you some crawfish. Now, how much would you say a commercial license for crawfishing cost? Can you get a commercial licensing? Or- That's a great question. No, you cannot. There's no such thing as a commercial crawfish license in the state of Florida. Interesting. So the interesting thing is, is Rodney, what you're telling me, I can catch crawfish. Yes, you can catch crawfish. And here is a crawfish trap. This one is at Bass Pro Shop. And I used to make my own. uh, And I'll tell you this, this thing is nine bucks. I mean, we're talking nine dollars. I cannot build this for nine bucks. And, and Bass Pro Shop is probably one of the most expensive places out there, and I was surprised to see how cheap these were. So basically, there's a hook on the top, 
And that's how you drop it in the water. You put your bait on the inside, and you drop this thing in the water. And if you look right there, the crawfish go right in that hole, and they can't get out. They walk right up there. They drop right into that cone, and they can't get out. I'm going to pop this thing open here and um, and show you a little something. So it, it, there's no limit. And look at here. You got two Garbage baskets. cans. You got garbage waste baskets. So... I mean, this is at Bass Pro Shop for $9. Man, you could go buy chicken wire and build your own for about $20 for the chicken yeah, wire. Yeah, you can yeah, build yeah. two or three, and you're not going to get this quality, and you're going to hurt. You're going to poke yourself, and you're going to put yeah. 20 hours of building crawfish yeah. traps. Go buy that thing How for $9. How much was that? that was $9. Nine bucks. That's crazy. Yeah, that's what I said. Nine bucks. Holy smokes. So the key to fl Florida crawfish is... Uh-oh. You Mike, want, you want to take that? I do. Lay it on me. All right, let's do it. <laughs> what up, my man? All right. Dude. How you doing, buddy? I'm well. How are you? Good. Hey, uh, just out of curiosity, yes, uh, catching these things as kids and stuff like that. Um, okay. Wait, who is this? This is, is Nick. A... I'm sorry, everybody. This is Nick. Nick. How'd you get this number? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I've been mean, watching your show. <laughs> We know that's a lie. Uh, so, oh no! Oh, you've been sitting here talking about crawfish and everything else. Come on. Okay, I got you. Okay, oh, you have been watching it. So Nick yep. and I used to be the crawfish experts. I mean, we have caught more Florida crawfish than one can wish to think of. So, what was your question, my man? I'm sorry, brother. Is there a length on them? No, there's no length. There's no limit. You can keep them as small as you want and as large as you want. There is absolutely no regulation in the state of Florida on crawfish. Well, I'll be, what about uh, traps? There's, there you can set 9,241 wow. traps if really? you want. There is no regulation. That's the key. Uh, so it doesn't matter really? the traps. doesn't matter the size. It doesn't matter if you use a seine, a net, a hand grenade. Uh, I, I probably wouldn't use a hand grenade. <laughs> But uh, there oh, is come no on. You just took all the fun out of it. I just did, didn't I? <laughs> oh, uh, mercy. Yeah. That's, yeah. So that's something. Now, in the state of Florida, the, the key, the, 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 um, the caveat, should, should I say, boy, mm -hmm. I, I got the big words in you me are tonight. Working Mike, it. Is there are a few species that are protected in the state of Florida. And that. So, how many species do we have? Uh, we've got 12 species of crawfish in the state of Florida. And one oh, didn't know okay. this, now did we? Now, uh, no, exactly. So there are a few species that is absolutely cannot be caught in the state of Florida, and um, I'll go over that, and you'll get to see the video, um, obviously, you know, once you once you start watching it. So the key, the caveat is, there's a few species you can't handle, and I'm gonna tell you what odds are you wouldn't find them anyway, but otherwise. Um, you know, so everything's fair game. Everything's fair game. So that's pretty cool to know, uh, ain't it, brother? Yeah. Brother, I'm telling you what we we probably ate some. We probably put some stuff in the uh, in the endangered species <laughs> as much exactly. as we eat. <laughs> <mean. laughs> you're exactly right, my man. You're exactly right. Oh goodness, goodness. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. But oh. I should have brought you in tonight to be on the show with us. You were doing nothing. I should have just said, dude, follow me. You were you yep, caught yep. the fish, so well. Next Tuesday night, next we Tuesday night, we haven't spilled the beans yet or spilled the crawfish, but yeah. Ne oh, next Tuesday night would be a perfect night. Yeah. So, all right, man, I appreciate yeah, you calling, okay. brother. All right, all right, brother. Bye. See you, so, like I said, the caveat is is what's important is what not to catch. So we've got three species that we're not allowed to touch, and one is uh, that you see up on the screen now. It's called the Black Creek crayfish now there's only one spot in the state of florida you can catch these and obviously in that black creek it's kind of <laughs> clever names clever names um so it's it's like in up near just above gainesville and ocala area there's a little spot up there that they have these so if your crawfish and why looks can't like, you catch them uh they oh they're actually on the endangered species i mean okay uh, you know loss of habitat and that's just that's, okay. that, that's kind of the way it is with all of these um kind of loss of habitat and if you look at this one you can tell it's it's important to pay attention to the beautiful stripe down the center of his head and the small claws 
So, I mean, that that's that and he's real dark black. I mean, he's actually black. Okay. This thing is literally uh so it, he's he doesn't look like your normal crawfish. Now, it does look like a little lobster. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They look like they look like lobsters. Now, our next one is called the Panama City or the Sims. You know, uh we got two. We got the Sims City crawfish. So, guess where that's from, Mike? The the game Sim City. <laughs> so, that one looks a little frisky. It's got bigger claws. I mean, there's a lot of cool features to this guy. That thing's souped up. That's a yeah. tur- turbocharger. That's a turbocharger. You want to get pinched by that guy. I've never been pinched by a crawfish that actually hurt. They 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 have a little pinch to them. You know, so it's the Sim City crawfish. Now, keep, you know, when you see these crawfish, if you're in these areas, we'll put these maps up. You know, you just want to make sure that if you're trapping in these areas, you want to pay attention. You don't want to be caught with one of these guys. It's not that you get, you know, they won't take your boat, your house, and your car. But, you know, it's it's just not fun to have the wrong stuff. You want to, you know what, to me in the outdoors, part of the fun of doing what we do is researching the animals that we're after. That's cool. Because it's the animals in the byproduct that make it so cool. I agree. The things you get to see that you did not expect to see. And this is one of them. And we may, you know, th- these weekends slow down during the summer. I may go look for these guys and see if we can't find them and, uh, and post our own pictures of them. I mean, you said some city. I mean, is that really a city? I don't know. I know I, it's game. I just, they just show me a map of where okay. it's at. Okay. I don't know why they call because it the that, Sim City. That would be phenomenal to see. Yeah. So, that, yeah, that's a cool crawfish. So, uh, And our next one is the Panama City crawfish. Now, this guy is a colorful character. He's got a couple stripes down his back, one down the center of his head that goes all the way down to his tail. He's very dominant uh, or prominent um, when it comes to color. And the only place you can catch this crawfish is the marshes of Panama City. And it's almost extinct because of hurricanes and because of loss, absolute loss of habitat. They've built so much there. They've drained the marshes to build houses and shopping malls that this guy has literally he he's not on the federal endangered list because they really don't care about crawfish he's on the state of florida endangered list so so is there what about the florida cave we're going to that one next sorry i jumped yeah again. you might have let me ask my question show's then. over so, uh, spoiler dang. alert well, <laughs> we lost connection 20 yeah. minutes ago anyway so it's all right Ryan. <laughs> cool so how if you're catching these things, yes. By the way, uh, Ryan Smith from Kansas says we call them crawdads and catch them with chicken liver on a hook in the rocks um, on the off the banks. Nice, yeah. That's that's how to do it. Crawdads. That means they got a lot of them. Up I there. remember them as crawdads. Yeah, crawdads. That's what we called them. Yeah, crawdads. Yeah, crawdads. Yep, that's exactly right. Good call, Ryan. So if um, <clears throat> but how so how do you know? I mean, obviously the one. Looks the, the last one, the Sim City one, looks very flamboyant. Yeah, I mean that one you would know you got something different, right? You, but would, I'm not sure if I caught a Panama City. Well, I'd just be excited that I caught a crawdad. If you were in Panama City, you would want to pay attention. Okay. You're not catching a Panama City one down here in, the, okay. in Central Florida or in this area south of you know Swanee. Okay, <laughs> no chance of it. Panama City is the only place this that they have found this crawfish. Okay. So you're you're pretty much safe. So you're not, you're not going to catch this guy. Now your last one, any crawfish that dwells in a cave cannot be harvested in any what? cave in the state of Florida. So you know, you, you, have you ever dove in a cave and seen the little crawfish on the the the? I, I've never. No, I, I'm going to say no. Okay, yeah. If you dive like um uh, Crystal River and stuff like that, and you go on the edge of those caves every once in a while, you'll see a little crawfish. You know, so those are off limits. Ca- those are off limits. If it's in a cave, you cannot catch a crawfish in a cave. These are called cave dwelling crawfish. So in the state of Florida, they're protected. Again, that one looks like an albino something or yeah, other. That thing yeah. looks a little freaky. No sun. They're blind. They don't have eyeballs. So they're they have heightened senses. Their senses. So if you catch a crawfish with no eyeballs, put him back. Wow. <laughs> so cave dwelling crawfish are off limits. So you're Great. not going to want that anyway. Yeah, I mean, it just I looks like a shrimp yeah, of some sort. Yeah. I mean, it's just so few and far between. There's not a lot of them. So it's not like you can um, – it's not. It's a, it's a delicacy. Let's go back to catching them again. Though. So let's go back to catching them. So here you got the trap. The trap you're looking at 
is uh, has a cone on both ends. You know, like I said, I, I've got one, and it's it's basically there's a cone on the inside. So what they do is they they'll crawl right up this cone and they'll fall right into the trap, and they can't get oh, they can't get back out. It's not like you know they just. You know, if they were sm- super smart, they they could, but they're they're, they're not. Now, what about? There's got to be other things that could potentially go in there as well. Do you find other? Things oh, absolutely! Besides- you'll get minnows. You'll get helgamite. You'll get all kind of weird stuff in here when you pull this trap. There's going to be there could be snakes in there. There could be. I mean, you can get anything inside that trap. Well, trust let, me. let me ask you this: Is yes. this the same? Um, is this the way, same thing as a, a, like a blue crab trap? Uh, similar so, premise, yeah, right? It's similar premise. The blue crabs are square. Like a big... Yeah, and they have like a, a spot in the center uh, where you put your bait. But here you just... I wouldn't... Here's what I would do, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put a, a uh, like a piece of chicken, strap it right to the bottom. Okay. You know, kind of let it... And it's going to just come right they're going to come right in this thing and, and eat on it i want it to last i'm gonna let it soak for a couple of days so i'll show you how i set it and i'll show you the bait that i'm going to use now it's got the hook on is it suspended in the water or is it sit on the bottom sits right on I, the bottom i guess because they need yeah. to crawl up and in and you want good steel water you you want the you know you can catch them in moving water but not as all you know not as plentiful okay because if you're sitting in nice calm still water then these th- that smell that Whatever you put in here, be it liver or chicken or or they whatever, can track it that way. Man, you know, it comes out. Then they follow it in. They track it. If you're in the marshes and that thick vegetation, you know, with a little bit of openness at the bottom, then that's that's your spot. So, and maybe you said this before, but the the hook on there is that to anchor it. You throw a rock or a weight yeah, on it. Yeah. So and- basically, this hook. I mean, there's a latch here that latches the two baskets. And then this hook holds the two together, and then you put your rope right in here. You toss it out. And you can put a rock in there if you want, but you toss this out, let it sink, and then you tie that rope to a tree. My okay. suggestion is use a black rope because if someone sees that bright yellow rope, they're going to pull it up, take your trap, your crawfish, and the whole operation. It happens. It sucks, but it happens. So, uh, you know, I'd like to catch some crawfish with this thing and um, and 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 hook it up. So find nice – if you can find a good deep swamp, go out there with a boat. Uh, canoe waders a lot of times you can get out there and waders and you can wait out there put your trap down tie it off mark your gps location now are you leaving it out there for uh, an hour a day you want to leave it at weekend? least overnight okay. because remember crawfish are most active at night okay okay it's kind of like you know they, they do do their moving at night because in the daytime a bass will gobble them right up bass love crawfish oh interesting so you know, you want to do it mostly at night if you can. At least let it soak overnight, um, and then go out there once a day or once every couple of days. I'm gonna let mine soak for about three days, you know, and then go back and check it and see how we do in three days. Now, if that thing is just jam packed, like you know, like my mailbox that I don't check in three months, we're gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> man, we're gonna be eating some crawfish, Mike. It's gonna, it's, it's gonna turn me into another person that I ain't, you ain't seen yet. Cause you've been on a cra- you've been on a crawfish kick lately. Kick lately. I mean, I don't dude. know. I don't know if your trip to New Orleans started, but I think it was actually before that. You yeah, it was. It was before that. It was before that. And you have found some places in Orlando. Woo, what? I mean, maybe maybe this is the theme of the month. What month? We got a couple weeks left. It's, in March. It's Mardi Gras. So yeah, this is crawfish season. So right? maybe we need to do first of spring. About everywhere is crawfish season. What they call crawfish season. Uh, so we are deep in the crawfish season. Well, I'll tell you this. I don't know that I've ever had it. Really? Yeah. I may have had a a, a, a broth or a soup or something, but I don't ever think... I mean, I love shrimp. Right. But I know this is a different ball game. Right, right. I don't know that I've ever had a crawfish. Mike. So I'll tell you what we'll do. So next week, let's do this. Whatever crawfish we catch, we cook on the show next week. With well, my favorite recipe... Yeah. I'm toying with some emotions, ain't I? Mm-hmm. You are. My favorite recipe, and we're gonna cook some crawfish on the show next week. Let's do that. Let's. I'll trap as many as we can. Okay. I've got a huge live well cooler. I can keep them alive all week. And man, we'll just feed them in the cooler. We'll just let them do their things. Let's have a little party out here. We'll change and the set. We'll, we'll do it out in the kitchen. Yep. Yep. We'll set up out in the kitchen. Okay. 
and then we'll we'll make we'll make it happen. It's a deal. You're committing. I'm committing. Okay, next crawfish Tuesday, next week. Next Tuesday night we're cooking crawfish. Tonight you figured it out how to. That's what I'm talking. So I'll set the trap this week. This weekend we'll make sure we put some crawfish in the basket, and actually I'll set it tomorrow, and then um, man we'll we'll let it soak. Now let me let me ask you um, a very I don't know what the I'll. Okay. Caution my, my terminology here. A very basic question. Yes. You know we always talk about bass fishing and you can do it off the off the clover leaf off the highway. Yes. Are yes. these same lakes ah, fair game for that, crawfish? Or is that a whole different uh, Yeah. You're not gonna find a lot of crawfish in those areas. Yeah. The, the, there may or may not be some that have crawfish. What kind of area are you looking You're for? You're looking for areas with vegetation. Okay. Think swamps. On the bottom of the... Yeah, because when they'll eat on dead fish, dead animals, and stuff like that. But when they're not, they're feeding off the dead vegetation that's on the bottom. Okay. You know what I mean? Sandy bottoms, not so good for yeah. crawfish. Okay. You know, you want that mucky bottom. You want the vegetation, you know, a little bit. You want to be able to get this trap below that vegetation. Uh, now, you can find them up north in the rocks and the streams. They're hiding under the rocks. You know, they, they have them up there. They have them everywhere. It's not like they don't, and it's not like you can't find them. But when they have an environment like our environment, you know, man, it's it's perfect for crawfish. Lake Toho? Lake Toho is absolutely a phenomenal place. Is it really? For crawfish. You know when we used to drive around and we see those white PVC pipes sticking yes. up? Yes. Remember during the camping trip? Yep. They were all around that island? Those are crawfish traps. Really? There's a guy out there catching crawfish, and he has for years. Wow. So Lake Toho is a great place for crawfish. It is crawfish heaven. Wow. And I know because I used to live on Lake wow. Toho. So, yes, it is a great place for crawfish. That guy made his own traps. So his trap was a little bit different than what you see here. Does crawf- but it was pretty close to the same Does thing. crawfish make a good chili? Uh, you know what? That's a good question. Crawfish chili. I That, that would be... Oh, man. A good Cajun crawfish chili boy right there, I'm going to tell you. That will be some good crawl to fish. And you got you to talk that way the whole day. Uh, the whole day. <laughs> well, we're going to pull up on this stump right here. We're going to pull that, that, that mud bug trap out of there. We're going to pull whatever it is, the alligator we don't care for. <laughs> We gotta get our we gotta get our coon ass on. That's what oh, we gotta do. That is good stuff, my friend. So you know that is so. Uh, to answer your question, um, uh, man, that is it. That that is absolutely how you do it. It's you're 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 happy to know that there is basically no regulations. Wayne is the one that sent us that question. Uh, Wayne, thank you so much. I can't thank you enough, man. You, you kind of. You know, we love when someone says, hey, have you done a show on this or have you done a show on that? We love that, you know, because, look, look, we're talking about this deliciousness <laughs> right here. This is how we do it. Um, you know, this is what the interaction we like. I see dips in there. What, what do you dip them in? Uh, I'm well, like some people have this Cajun. It's called, uh, I forgot the name of it, but it's like a Cajun sauce that they dip it in. It's got a little bit of um, Obey and stuff like that in it. Um, but I don't. I I cook it in a sauce. Uh, if you go to Hot and Juicy, to me right now, the best crawfish anywhere. And I challenge anyone to send me a, a thing saying, "Dude, these people got the best crawfish." I will tell you. But right now, Hot and Juicy. If you get the, they have several. <laughs> my just, mouth is just, water. You slobbered. That was. Awful. I'm just. My mouth is water. If you get the Hot and Juicy, this is the name of the flavor. Hot and Juicy, extra spicy. That right there, man, I got it. It's, I sweat. My glasses, when they're on my head, has frost in them when I'm done. Condensation, that's, that's how bad I sweat. And I sop that juice up with bread. It's full of garlic. It's full of goodness. It's just, it's heaven. And I get, I get what's called the get your feet wet special. That's a pound of crawfish and a pound of uh, shrimp. And it's got andouille sausage in there. It's got oh 12 goodness. andouille sausage, two ears of corn. And two potatoes. That's what I eat, dude, when I go there. Wow. Oh, yeah. I'm, man. And I go I go back to work after lunch smelling like garlic. Well, if they're not a sponsor already, they will be after the oh, this episode. Oh, my Lord, man. You've oh, got to try it. I'll tell you what. Tag me. I will meet you there, and we'll have it together. I'm telling you, man. It's absolutely delicious. Crawfish meetup. 
Rodney, our quarter is running out, my friend. I hear it. I see it. I feel Anything it. Anything coming up this week besides catching some crawfish? Well, we'll be offshore Sunday. Uh, we'll be back out there Sunday. It looks like the weather's going to hold out for us. I'm excited. They're catching the AJs like you don't even know, man. Wow. They are catching some giant fish. They caught a 53-pound amberjack this, yes, today. So I'm excited. We're, we're, we're due to get about there. we got five trips coming up. We've got the 26. Real briefly, for those yes. who don't know, you might have some new listeners tonight. Oh, okay. For those of you who don't know, we offer a fishing trip on our website. Go to RodneyRondersOutdoors.com, click on the store, and you'll see our grubs, and you'll see Fired Up Charters. $200 buys you a spot on a boat of six people. Those six people, one of them is me. So you're fishing with five other guys. 90% of the time, I do not fish. I simply help out. I want to be offshore. I want to help people catch fish. People have asked me for years, please take me fishing, and I can't. I wish I could, but I can't. This was the best way I could get to everybody. Yeah, Book your charter. It's going to be an absolute blast, man. You want to be a part of this. I'm excited. I can't wait. And, man, you know, this includes tip. You walk on. You fish. You walk off. You get your meat and you go home. Oof. That's cool. You know, that's it. It's that's it keeps cool. it that simple. If you want to book the boat yourself, tell Fired Up Charters we sent you. It's 900 bucks per trip. You know, if you want to book with us, get on. You'll be one of the six people. And what we do is at the end of the day, we'll take the total amount of fish and split it up between the five people. I will only keep fish if we have a mahi or a kobe on the boat or a wahoo. That's the only way I keep fish. I love amberjack. If I catch an amberjack, I'll keep some, you know, if I help out. But most of the time, I want you guys to enjoy that experience. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe me, you know, ask the guys that went on the first trip. They absolutely had a blast. And I can't wait, you know, hopefully to see everybody out there, man. It's, it's, it's absolutely a great time. And our captain, I go on about this all yeah. night. So Do Don't hesitate, folks. <clears throat> that's that's what we got coming up. We're going to be doing some trapping. Next week, we'll cook the crawfish. So, um, Mike, you got anything? I don't, Rodney. What? Um, I'm looking forward to, to next week to, we're gonna have to fill in this, this place with aroma. Yeah, we're going to have to make a four-hour show. And as my mama said 18 million times, and I pray I get to say it half as much. I love you, Mama. And you kids get outside and stay.